Hello everyone, now let us discuss about anatomy of musculoskeletal system. In the current session, we will be focusing on joints. Introduction part of joints. So what are joints? Usually bones are too rigid to bend without being damaged. So flexible connective tissues form joints that hold bones together while still permitting in most of the cases some degree of movement. Flexible connective tissues, they form joints that hold bones together while still permitting some degree of movement in most of the cases. Certain joints are immovable and the study of joints is called as orthrosis whereas the study of motion of human body is called as kinesiology. Coming to the definition of joint, a joint also called as articulation or orthrosis is a point of contact between either two bones or bone and cartilage and bone and teeth. Joint can be between two bones, bone and cartilage and bone and teeth. It is a point of contact between two bones. In simple terms, joint is a point of contact between two bones. It is also called as articulation or orthrosis. Coming to the classification of joints, joints are broadly categorized into two types based on structure and based on function, structural classification and functional classification. The structural classification is based on the anatomical characteristics, whereas the functional classification, it is based on the type of movement they permit. And based on structural classification, Joints are of three types, fibrous, cartilaginous and synovial. In case of synovial joints, as the term indicates, these type of joints are characterized by synovial cavity. And whereas when it comes to fibrous or cartilaginous joints, there is no synovial cavity, but the fibrous joints are formed by dense irregular connective tissue is the articulating material. In case of fibrous joints, the articulating material is dense irregular connective tissue. Whereas in case of cartilaginous joints, the articulating material is cartilage. That is the bones are held together by cartilage in case of cartilaginous joints and there is no synovial cavity. In case of fibrous joints, the bones are held together by dense irregular connective tissue. And here also there is no synovial cavity. Whereas synovial joints, they are characterized by synovial cavity. And all di diarthrosis are synovial joints. This is important point. All diarthrosis are synovial joints. Now coming to the classification of joints based on function, functional classification. It is based on the type of movement they permit. Based on the type of movement, joints are categorized into synarthrosis, amphiarthrosis and diarthrosis. Synarthrosis means immovable joints. Amphiarthrosis means slightly movable joints, whereas diarthrosis means freely movable joints. So all diarthrosis are synovial joints. So all freely movable joints are synovial joints. This is a statement. All freely movable joints, which are nothing but diarthrosis, they are synovial joints. Now let us discuss in detail about each type of uh, joint based on structural classification, description, functional classification and example. So first based on structural classification, we know that based on structure, um, joints are of three types, fibrous, cartilaginous and synovial. First we will discuss about fibrous joints. In case of fibrous joints, there is no synovial cavity and the articulating bones are held together by fibrous connective tissue. Examples of fibrous joints are sutures, 
syndesmosis and interosseous membrane. These three are fibrous joints, sutures, syndesmosis and interosseous membrane. Coming to sutures. In case of sutures, the articulating bones are held together by thin layer of dense irregular connective tissue. In case of sutures, the articulating bones are held together by thin layer of dense irregular connective tissue found between skull bones. With age, some sutures they are replaced by synostosis. As the age passes, with the development of or advancement of age, some sutures are replaced by synostosis. That is separate cranial bones, they fuse into single bone. Now, structural classification of suture is fibrous joint. Coming to the functional classification, a suture can be synarthrosis, that is immobile, or amphiarthrosis, slightly mobile. Sutures can be synarthrosis or amphiarthrosis. Example of suture is coronal suture. Now, next type of fibrous joint is syndesmosis. Here, the articulating bone united by more dense irregular connective tissue. Previously, in case of suture, it is thin layer of dense irregular connective tissue. Here, they are united by more dense irregular connective tissue, usually a ligament. The articulating bones are united by more dense irregular connective tissue, usually a ligament, in case of syndesmosis. The functional classification of syndesmosis is amphiarthrosis. All syndesmosis, they are slightly mobile. All syndesmosis are amphiarthrosis. Example is distal tibo, uh, tibiofibula joint. Example of syndesmosis is distal tibiofibula joint. The next type of fibrous joint is interosseous membrane. Here, the articulating bones are united by substantial sheet of dense irregular connective tissue. And the functional classification of interosseous membrane is amphiarthrosis. This is also slightly mobile. Example is joint between tibia and fibula. Now, based on structural classification, let us discuss about the second type of joint that is cartilaginous joint. In case of cartilaginous joints, there is no synovial cavity and the bones are held together by either hyaline cartilage or fibrous cartilage. The examples of cartilaginous joints are synchrondosis and symphysis. In case of synchrondosis, the connecting material is hyaline cartilage and the synchrondrosis they become synostosis when bone elongation ceases. Coming to the structural classification of synchrondrosis, they are synastrosis that is immovable joints. Synchrondrosis is an immovable joint. Example is epiphyseal plate between diaphys diaphysis and epiphysis of long bone. Example of synchrondrosis is epiphyseal plate between diaphysis and epiphysis of long bone. Next is symphysis. Here the connective material is broad flat disc of fibrous cartilage. And symphysis is slightly mobile joint. Example is pubic symphysis and intervertebral joints. They come under symphysis. Examples of symphysis is intervertebral joints and pubic symphysis. They are amphiarthrosis that is slightly mobile. Now coming based on structural classification, the third type of joint is synovial joints. And here the synovial joints, as the name indicates, they are characterized by synovial cavity, articular cartilage and articular joint, which is nothing but capsule. Synovial 
joints they contain synovial cavity articular cartilage and a capsule articular capsule they may also contain accessory ligaments articular discs and bursa there are six types of synovial joints let us discuss in detail about each joint first one is plane plane joint is a type of synovial joint in case of plane joint the articular surfaces are flat or slightly curved and the plane joints are mostly freely movable example are many biaxial arthrosis biaxial means they permit back and forth and side to side movements and some triaxial arthrosis that is they permit three types of movements back and forth side to side and rotation so some many biaxial arthrosis and some triaxial arthrosis are plane joints example are intercarpellar intertarsalar sternocostal and vertebrocostal joints the next type of synovial joint is hinge joint the first one is plane joint and the next is hinge joint here a convex surface fits into concave surface in simple terms in case of hinge joint a convex surface fits into a concave surface and many uni uh, uniaxial arthrosis hinge joint it permits uniaxial arthrosis example is flexion and extension hinge the type of movement that is permitted by hinge joint is flexion and extension and it is a uniaxial arthrosis example of hinge joints are knee elbow ankle and interphalangeal joints knee elbow ankle and interphalangeal joints are hinge joints the next type of uh, synovial joint is pivot joint here rounded or pointed surface fits into ring formed partly by bone and partly by ligament and it is also it also permits uniaxial diarthrosis it is also an example of uniaxial diarthrosis and it permits rotation pivot joint permits rotation hinge joint permits flexion and extension example of pivot joint are atlantoaxial and radio ulnar joints the next type of joint in synovial joints is condyloid here an oval shaped projection fits into oval shaped depression and condyloid joint it allows biax it is an biaxial arthrosis diarthrosis that is it allows flexion and extension abduction and adduction example of condyloid joints are radiocarpal and metaphalangeal joints the next is saddle joint here the articular surface of one bone is saddle shaped and the articular surface of other bone sits into the joint and it is also a biaxial diarthrosis that is it permits flexion and extension abduction and adduction examples of saddle joints are carpo metacarpal joint between trapezium and metacarpal of thumb and the next is the famous joint ball and socket joint here ball like surface of one joint fits into cup like depression of another bone ball like surface of one bone fits into cup like depression of another bone the example of ball and socket joint is shoulder and hip joint and they are triaxial diarthrosis ball and socket joints are triaxial diarthrosis they allow flexion extension abduction and adduction and rotation the example of ball and socket joints are shoulder and hip joints saddle and condylar joints are biaxial diarthrosis whereas ball and socket joint is triaxial diarthrosis example of ball and socket joints are shoulder and hip 
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for further videos on anatomy and physiology.